Hello, and welcome to Polly Knits YouTube channel. Today is July 27th, 2017. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, before we get started, I will tell you I'm wearing a Stephen West pattern called Clockwork. It's not going to stay on the whole podcast. It's really hot. <laughs> I'll take it off and show you when I take it off. Water. I'm a big water drinker. Okay, so what have I been working on? Uh, I got... Oh, hold on. On Ravelry, I am Polly81. On Instagram, I'm Polly Knits. On YouTube, I'm Polly Knits. And if you can't find me on YouTube, look up Paul Cessna. C-E-S-S-N-A. That should help you find me better. A few people have had trouble, so... Um, I'm not on Twitter, Facebook is not public, and I do plurk, and I well, I think I'm probably nuts over there also. I haven't been there for quite a while, so. Okay, back to what I was saying. This is my sock yarn blanket. So when I knit socks and I have scraps, or someone gives them to me, um... Then I just put them in here. So, uh, there's the row I did. Let's see. Which row did I just do? Hold on a moment. No, that's not it. No, that's it. Okay. Let me see. Sorry, let me show you. I can cut a lot of this out. So, there we go. That bottom row was the one I just did. Then I just work on this leisurely whenever I feel like it. It's not meant to ever be finished. Um, so I would tell you the yarn, but I don't know. Or maybe I just don't want to. Okay. So that's the sock yarn blanket. Next up, what I'm knitting, I've been working on my Mary Maxim throw. So it's this navy blue yarn, if you can remember. And the right side. Yeah, this is the right side, so I'm not far. It is really fun to work on, actually. I'm on my fourth repeat. I just want to make sure that the um, yarn doesn't come off the needles, because this one would be a bitch to try to pick up the yarn over. I hate that. <laughs> so, the yarn is 100% acrylic or whatever. Um, oh, I have it right here. Let me find the label. It's going to be a loud one, but guys, um, yeah. and that's what I use to hold my door open, so that just clicks. So it's called Royal from Mary Maxim. Okay, so that's... stuck on my shoe the yarn this podcast I oh god I hope this turns out okay so I'm taking this off now I knit this is one of my first shawls I ever knit and um I'd like to make it again when I first made it I couldn't figure out how to wear it I didn't think it fit me which I don't honestly I think I may have been a bit too big so just for this particular scarf uh this is Nitpick's palette in black and a uh, Tide Pool Heather, which is my favorite Nitpick's color that they have. And the next thing I am crafting is crochet. And I don't know why I started it. Um, I was on YouTube cruising around like I do, and I looked at the crochet crowd, because of course I can't help myself. He always gets me to do a pattern. <laughs> This is a poncho, the granny square poncho. 
and I'm just gonna keep going and going. It just gives me something to crochet. Uh, and I want to use up this yarn, which is Red Heart. So, Red Heart Super Saver. Uh, I'd like to gift this to a friend or, I don't know. It's not for me. I just am doing it to do it. And I'm using this, which is, um, makes it so your skein doesn't fly everywhere. Your cake. Try to get the terminology right. So this is called Painted Desert. And you can tell why I like the colors. Uh, but I feel like I had a weak moment at Michael's and I saw the red heart and it's like, I don't, I don't usually go towards that area, but you know, whatever. It's not bad. It's all right. When I was at Stitches West, they had a red heart booth there and oh my God, their table was so beautiful. They had the most beautiful afghans and stuff out. And I'm using an H hook. These are my favorite crochet hooks. I where did, This one came from Joann's. And that's about all I've been working on. I really haven't been doing much because the Tour de France just got over, which means it was the Tour de Fleece, which I always join. Let's talk Anchor about, works. let's talk about the tour. And I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to keep getting up too because everything is over here. And I'm sorry if I can't remember exactly what these are. Okay. I spun this. It's Ethereal Fibers. Autocorrect. Man on man. This is going to be epic. I got a ran. Three ply. 128 yards. 100% pull worth. There's one. <laughs> This one, which has no tag, is mm, Mermaid, let's see, Under the Sea, it's called Under the Sea, and it's from Huckleberry Knits, and this one was also purchased at Stitches West. Okay, I spun... I'm not sure if I did this right before or after. I mean right before or if I did it during the tour. I think I spun this on my spindle. Let's see, no. Well, I'll have to look at my um, hand spun page on Ravelry because I keep track of everything there. Uh, in fact, that's what I've been doing these last few days. Uh, I don't have my yarns on Ravelry, but I have a big chunk of them now. <laughs> I've just been um, taking yarns out of this cabinet behind me and just putting them up. So I, I feel like it'll help me uh, figure out patterns. Pattern and yarn choices. Okay. I spun this for the tour. This was a bat from Joanna Spring. And her shop is named Knit Spin Farm. I believe she's in Indiana. Beautiful bats. Great price. Forest Pond, two ply, supported long draw, 132 yards, and it's just mixed fibers. And this is a heavy worsted to a bulky. I couldn't quite figure that reps per inch out. So that's cool. I wanted chunks in it. And I wanted it to be just its natural beauty of a bat. Because when you smush it, all the air out of your fiber with... Well, a lot of you guys aren't spinners. So I will try to explain something to you. Um, when you're doing a short forward draw, which it makes a yarn that is... Um, Something like you get in a kind of like just a smooth yarn. All the air has been pushed out of it. It's flattened. There's, you know, it's not fluffy. It's not fuzzy. It's just a 
pretty standard um, style of yarn and this was the woolen prep and I spun it woolen so you could see right there that it's fluffy and fuzzy and it's just um, not perfect because you don't want I don't know do you want perfect when you do a woolen I don't think so like the beauty about hand spun is that it's all special so that was a uh, a bat, Forest Pond. Okay. And. Okay, here is my spindle project for the Tor to Fleece. It was called the Wheel of Fortune Bat. And this bat, I did spin uh, Worsted. So Worsted is the smooth yarn and Woolen is the floofy, fuzzy yarn. And this was just a two-ply on the spindle, the acre work spindle, and um, I couldn't tell you what was in here <laughs> or how much it is at the moment. Once again, I didn't put a tag on that one. It, uh, what happened is that I don't tag them while they're still wet, so. Okay. Put those up here. Let's see. Oh, here's another one that I spun. So this is a mystery roving. It was just a big brown ball of roving in like a long strip. And I, I always thought it was just called roving, but apparently they call it sliver or something. I'm learning more about this. So this one was done one-handed. There was no supporting it. I was just taking my hand and pulling back, which drafted the fiber out to how thin I wanted it. And then I would feed it onto the bobbin. Uh, it's gonna be hard to see. Let's see here. So it's really, really lightweight. I learned, another thing I learned is that woolen yarn is much lighter. You can get a really light yarn, like um, if you've ever bought Loft, or let's see, I think Quince and Company has a few woolen yarns, and if you haven't tried knitting with them before, I would suggest it. You never know, you might like it. Okay, next up, I spun this, but this was right before the tour, and I this thing was on the wheel for like over a year, oh my god. And it's all broken up too because I tried to chain ply it and I don't like chain ply. <laughs> it's I don't have the rhythm down for it quite. Like I kept losing where my hands were supposed to be. Then I'd lose the loop and then I'd get it to break and the strands. Um, but this one is from Highland Handmaids. And if you haven't been to her shop, go check it out. I love her shop. Oh, it's probably one of my most favorites. And this is called What You See. Oh, this wasn't her. Oops. Sorry, this wasn't Highland Handmade. This was from Leading Men Fiber Arts. I thought it was from her. Who's this from? I'm going to guess it's Leading Men. Okay, it's a three-ply chain ply, 138 yards, worsted weight, and I wrote there are knots in this skein. And it should stripe. So... I need to get my button gear and knit with some of my hand spun and see what it's going to do. And that's all the hand spun I have to show you. Okay. I, I am spinning something right now. I started an after the tour project. And um, the other thing I did right after the tour was I put my spinning wheel up on my desk and I oiled and waxed her and um, her name's Delilah and she's a Magic Craft Susie, an older style. And the next thing I'm going to cast on is from Karen Engine Fiber Arts. E-N-G-E-N -E and it's called Artfully Felt dot blogspot dot com and she has an Etsy shop. So I have uh, four ounces of these little nesties 
and the color was chartreuse. And I'm gonna do two plies of the green and one ply of a beautiful navy kind of color, royal navy kind of color. And I'm gonna three ply them together so I can get like super duper barber pulley goodness. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to stash enhancement. So, uh, you guys know that I like the Karen Cakes that just recently came out. And I have three Karen Cakes, and um, when I was searching on Ravelry for patterns for them, all the patterns, I needed more than one cake. So, I went to Michael's and bought the uh, one one more of each of the colors so I this one was four dollars on the clearance and then when I went down the aisle they had them all shoved in where the Vanna choice usually is so I got this color which is key lime which I love I love highlighter colors and this color is my other favorite they're all my favorite cake pop And thank you for giving me your comments on Instagram because I shared this and people were telling me what they made with it or if someone gifted them something with it. Uh, a lot of people are liking shawls. So this color is what attracted me to the Karen Cakes first. And this color is blueberry cheesecake. Like, how could you not? I'd love a piece right now. Alright, the next thing was a mystery because I am a member of the Mary Maxim club, Knit Club of the Month. And this month, the pattern is for this shawl looking thing. I'm not quite sure what it is. All I know is that it, I don't like it. Well, for me, I don't like it. It's called a Lacy Knit Medallion Wrap. There's another picture of the lacy things. I'm not into that. You guys know I'm not going to make that. And what it, the yarn it came with was this. 1,400 yards of a cone of white cotton in sport weight. This is the only sport weight yarn I own. Uh, <laughs> what the heck am I going to do with 1,400 yards of white sport weight? Oh my gosh. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I know a lady who, lo who likes to crochet with this kind of stuff, but I don't, I honestly don't think she'd, she'd use this. And she told me that there's a place she's been going to to get help with her crochet, and... Um, I've given that lady yarn before to crochet with, and she was so happy, and she actually used it right away. So, I don't know. I might ask her if she's interested in that one, because I definitely don't need any more sash. <laughs> I've been taking pictures of everything and putting it on Ravelry, and it just makes you not want to buy yarn. It makes you think, oh, I love that one. I should knit that one next. And then you pull another yarn out. Oh, this one. I remember buying this one 10 years ago. Oh, why didn't I knit that one? It's like, okay. Stop buying yarn. Stop buying fiber. Because this is my retirement. The uh, yarn is my retirement. <laughs> so, uh, that's pretty much all I've got today. Let me think if there's anything else I wanted to share. Hello. Alright, I'm going to cut this into the video because I forgot to talk about a project. <laughs> I was wondering, um, geez, I know I'm forgetting something. <laughs> okay, so if you guys remember, I started a pattern out of this book. Son of a Stitchin' Bitch. The pattern's on the cover in the blue sweater, if you can see that. And let me show you in the... Just quickly, I know that you guys have seen this. Um, so this is the sweater I was doing without the band armband. It's cabled and 
So I found out a few things. Um, I found I knew it was gonna be too small for me, <laughs> and also um, I got stuck and I couldn't figure out where I was. I was almost done too. So um, here's the sweater. <laughs> I ripped it all out and I washed. The yarn's already washed and dried. Here's another ball of it. This is um, Cascade Superwash in the Space Needle colorway. And I'll show you what I've done. So this is a gauge swatch, how I do my sweater gauge swatching. And what you do is you start out with a needle. I started out with it US 8. That's what a lot of the sweaters I've been looking at call for. And I wanted to check that gauge. Way too loose. Um, like, uh, the second one was a 7, and the third one was a 6. And so if you look at this, I just put all, uh, however many yarn overs is the needle size on that little section of the swatch. And so the sweater called Cobblestone by Jared Flood. Um, I haven't knit that and I've been wanting to for a long time. It just came back out. They just re-photographed it and they uh, updated the pattern and it's so beautiful. But I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do that one yet. And uh, their pattern does call for a US 8. But for me to get that gauge I have to go down to a US 6. So, um, I don't know. Huh. But now there's one more thing. Uh, a lot of guys are saying that they're having a hard time finding men's patterns. And somebody over on Instagram directed me to a blog called Knitting Pure and Simple. And the lady's name is D Diane Saucy. Let me see if you can, if that's in the frame. Um, so I encourage you. <clears throat> male or female there she has great patterns but what I'm saying is if you just want a very simple men's uh, top down sweater v-neck crew neck it's on there she's got it on her uh, Ravelry so I want you guys to look her up and um, cue a bunch of those sweaters it'd be great for yarn use up also so um, that's just what I wanted to say. Um, the yarn doesn't really feel like it's drying too much. I even had it out in the sun. I, it feels cold. I don't know. So, that's it. Alright, thanks. Bye. Oh, my personal life. I went to the doctor again yesterday, and I have to go back. They got me on new drops, so we'll see what goes on. You're going to be on the podcast. I told them not to walk by. Um, anyways, the eye thing. So I'm on a third drop. So now I went from taking two drops a day to five drops a day. And um, the right eye is giving me trouble. And the pressures are not dropping because I have glaucoma. So that's what's happening there. And um, I'll go in in another week. And then we'll, we'll do some testing. So, uh, that's all I have for today. I hope you guys are all enjoying your knitting and your spinning. And uh, get outside and hang out with your family too because they need you. And, um, yeah, have a great day. I'll see you in two weeks. Bye.